This is McCook's Mr. Bilson. Honor to have you here. One of the things that I've done for 38 years is Mr. Bill on the streets. Besides selling snow cones for a quarter and giving them free if they don't have any money. One of the things I do is do a little bit of preaching. Not as much about God as about life and common sense. One of the things I push big time is that if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Or if somebody's trying to get you to do something that's illegal, it's probably a sting. Or there's a good chance. So I give you these two examples. I had a uh, friend that I went to high school with. He was a year behind me, but we were friends. Dirt dog poor he was. Farming kid he was. And uh, uh, he got through high school. And not enough money or smarts to get into college and so what he did he just started working for a farmer out here west of McCook Nebraska and he worked for a year at below minimum wage but he worked there but the old farmer said once you get on to it after a year he said I'll give you a good raise he said it'll be worth your time then so he was loyal for that year and at the end of the year, nothing was said. So he finally went to the uh, farmer and said, Hey, you know, you said if I was here for a year that you'd give me a raise. And he said, I'm married now, got a little kid. He said, I, I sure could use that raise. And the farmer said, I'll tell you what, I'll do you even one better. He said, you keep the same wage you got, but, he said, in five years, you work for me just five years, and I'll give you free a quarter section of ground, 160 acres of ground. You will own it, you can farm it, and you can start your own farm. How about that? Well, my friend thought it was almost too good to be true, but he took the offer. <clears throat> the five years went quick enough, hard work, six days a week, below minimum wage, living in poverty, he and his wife, and then finally two children. And he got to the fifth year and again nothing was being said so he finally went to him and he said hey you know I worked for you for a year you said instead of giving me a raise you'd let me have a quarter section of ground if I'd work for you for five more years. And I said the five years, or he said the five years was up and he said you know I'd like to get that piece of ground you get it signed over to me. The farmer said, I don't know what you're talking about, you're lying. Get off my farm. I never said that. My friend, shocked, hurt, and dismayed, walked away. If it's too good to be true, it probably is, or at least get it in writing. The second one was just simply a sting. One of many that I faced in my life, of course. But the old, uh, I and my family were having a real tough time that one year. It, it got real tight. And uh, the word must have got out a little bit. And I had a, a gentleman call me up. He was a farmer, local farmer. And he said, Mr. Bill, he said, I've heard you having a hard time. You just come out here anytime you want. You can poach a deer. You can poach a deer. And he said, nobody will know. And he said, give your family some meat. Give your family some meat. Well, I told him, I said, that fine if you get caught poaching a deer. I think at the time it was $500 or $1,000. I think it's 5000 now. But I said, it's just not a fine. I said, they take your gun, and which I don't have one, so I'd have to borrow one, and then I'd have to buy somebody a new gun. Plus, plus, I'd lose my vehicle. Now, I sure as the devil can't afford to lose my vehicle. I said, no, the, the risks are way too great for such an event unless my family was starving to death and we ain't there yet because we still got our garden hopefully we'll have a decent garden this year but it's been a tough year and he said well nobody will ever know and I said no thank you no thank you walked away from that idea never looked back about six months later I saw him downtown now I barely knew the farmer to begin with but he walked up to me and he said, boy, you missed the bullet. I said, I'm listening. 
And he said, well, he said he'd gotten in trouble with law enforcement. And there was a few in law enforcement that had a target on me, wanted to get me. And so a sting was set up. And they used him and said they'd lessen his penalties for the uh, crime apparently he had committed. He didn't go into detail what it was. But they'd lessen that if he would help them with a sting on me. And so he did. And so he did. And he said, you didn't fall for it. You didn't fall for it. I walked away from him and never spoke to him since. We see each other now and then in McCook. Be that as it may, if it's too good to be true, question it up one side and down the other and get it in writing. And if somebody wants you to break the law, you'd be a lot safer if you just assume it's a sting. You guys have a good day.